Come right back. Here he is. Cormac Ryan joins us. I just said, Cormac, we had you on Notre Dame. Now we've gone full circle. Yep. You're making it on board as a Tar Heel. Uh, transition apparently looks like it's been great. you got a really good basketball team. Yeah, we sure do. Um, it's been so smooth. I think that's a credit to Coach Davis, the staff, this university. It's like really special place. I mean, you know, it's like a family and they welcome you with open arms. Even a guy who played in, in conference had heated battles with this team and now I'm a part of the family. Feels great. So when you were looking around, obviously, this, this is an instant you would love to finish a career here at Carolina, but what, what stood out to you, especially with what they were building under Hubert Davis and what you wanted to be a part of? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing was I really trusted Coach Davis, mm -hmm. and he did an awesome job recruiting me and, and the whole staff, and they kind of laid out a vision and a plan for me and the team that we were kind of building and building on from the guys coming back from last year who I actually had some familiarity with. I played against RJ and Armando for a long time, Jay Wash, Seth. Uh, so I knew their, their game on the court. I knew you know, them as people to some extent. And I think um, you know, his role and his vision for me and kind of the guys he was bringing in and the, the plan he had for us and where we were going was really attractive. Checked a lot of boxes. Yeah, I just want to take a deep dive into your head because you know, it's almost like you being a freshman again, coming into a new program. What was it like mentally and what helped you to be able to mentally make that transition to come to Carolina and, you know, get that, get that whole freshman feel again? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously like a, a certain level of adjusting you have to do, learning where buildings are, <laughs> learning who, who's who and the names of the, you know, the maintenance guy and everything, like that's all, all part of it, but I think for me, it was really easy and, and again, like it goes back to the guys here and how welcoming they were and coach uh, just really helping me along and, and getting me acclimated. We also did a great job during the summer building a foundation. We have a pretty new team. We've got five transfers, two freshmen. That's seven guys out of 14 scholarships that are like brand new. Right. And so <laughs> yeah. that takes a lot of work and we, uh, we dove right in right away. We got to know each other on, a, on the court, off the court. And I think that chemistry has only grown and it's been a real strength for our group. We just feel really comfortable with each other. We trust each other and we love each other. Gormack, do you have a memory about North Carolina when you were at Notre Dame? Uh, I mean, whenever North Carolina comes to town, you always want to give them their best shot. Now I'm on the receiving end of that, which is, <laughs> is the real deal. And uh, it's a badge of honor being here and getting everyone's best punch. But I remember always wanted to, to play well and, and play hard against Carolina. It's obviously a, a historic program. So many great players have come through here. And, um, you know, that's what you get. You, you're a, a great program. You're always going to get everyone's best shot. You know, I told T Taylor's not been to the Smith Center yet. And no. I said, the second you walk in and you look up, you, it, it floor, you don't take another step. You just kind of yeah. freeze your your spot and you just look up and you take it on it's like looking around this museum you, your jaw just hits the ground with all the cool stuff but there's something cool about the top of the smith center right i mean that oh, yeah. ceiling is yeah i mean it, it, it catches you off guard i think the first time the first time i played there was a freshman and i was at stanford and it, it does it, it's breathtaking almost i think i don't know if it's because there's no scoreboard in the middle or it's just so big like you just look up in the rafters, there's a million banners there. Like we always joke with uh, the guys, like the, the final four banners in any other program are the biggest banners. Like they, they have the whole side of the gym blocked off. <laughs> you look up in the, in the corner, they're like the size of a post-it note because you got so many of them. Um, and so, you know, we, we obviously want to add one more in the post-it note up there. Um, but it's funny, like this place has so much history, like they, they are almost running out of room for banners. For you, we were just talking in the break. I was like, how old are you now? Because you're one of these guys yeah. who's been around. Hey, shout out to COVID and all the years you get extra. But you're 25 years old yep, now, I am. which is awesome. <laughs> and you're still living the college life. We always joke that, hey, if we could stay in college as long as we can, we would. Like, I would go back right now if I could. The real world isn't all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> so when you look at your team, though, th there's a freshman guard, Elliot Cadeau, who's doing his thing out there. So you're 25 He's still a baby. He reclassified. He, he, he honestly could still be in high school at this point. What's it been like going through it with him with the age gap and, and learning together, but also teaching him a little bit? It's been awesome. Uh, Elliot's so mature for his age and for his being a freshman. And I've mentioned this to you know, Adam on his podcast, but it, it, there's no amount of like 
babysitting or telling them like, you know, no, don't do this, got to do this. Like these guys get it. And that makes our job as, as older guys on the team a lot easier. Uh, obviously there's moments where you get in their ear and you just tell them like, hey, you know, like, you know, be aware of a, a back door here out of a timeout or, you know, put your hands up, you know, when the, the guy's driving because the ref called two fouls on you, you know, like just little stuff that right. you can get in their ear. And I think Coach Davis really appreciates guys like me doing that because those are not always stuff you can do from the sideline. They're kind of in quick adjustments in the game um, and, and different guys react differently to different leadership styles. And right. so I think being able to figure out the new guys, the younger guys, what kind of makes them tick and being able to communicate with them effectively and just be a leader for these guys. Cause I've been through a lot. I've played a lot of basketball, especially at this level. And um, you know, that's one of the things that I bring to this team is just, you know, trying to give that experience back and, and be a leader for these guys. Cool. Before you got here, did you hear, did you hear much about the rivalry? Like what, 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 back in the day, what, what have you heard about the rivalry? Are you asking me if I heard about Carolina Duke? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, he's a never. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I have. I mean, I, I think like it's, it speaks for itself. We were talking the other day about, I think it's the best rivalry in sports because I don't know of any rivalry that's been this competitive for this long. Right. And you talk about like Celtics Lakers, they had, Magic and Bird go at it, but then it kind of fell off. And then it picks back up with Kobe, and then it falls off again. Like, Carolina Duke's been Carolina Duke for as long as, yeah. you know, the ball's been bouncing. It's, it's unbelievable. Growing up as a kid, it's one of the, the major basketball games you tune into. And I'm from New York City. I don't really care about North Carolina basketball, <laughs> like, in terms of from being from the state, being from, you know, next door neighbors, I don't get that aspect of it, but you still care yeah. mm -hmm. because it's like the rivalry in college sports. And so it's obviously been really cool to, to kind of get a feel for that and now to be a part of. Yeah. Well, what you're talking about, we just put the graphic up. This will be the 49th time North Carolina and Duke have hooked up, both ranked in the top 10. The next closest series is at 14. Uh, that puts it totally in perspective. Right. Wow. 35 is the, is the gap between what Duke right. Carolina is about and the rest of the world. Enough said. And then, of course, it's 24-24, the excellence on both sides. So with that said, here comes Duke. Uh, you guys are coming off a tough loss with Georgia Tech. I'm assuming practice has been rather intense this week, uh, whether Duke was coming or not. But here comes Duke. Uh, so what's practice like this week for a Duke week? Yeah, practice is super focused. Uh, we're, we are locked in. We have obviously one goal in mind is to win this basketball game. And um, we've got a, a team of guys who – really understand the importance. Obviously, it's an important game. It means a lot uh, to the program, but it's also just the next game on the schedule, and that's always the most important game, and it carries a lot of weight, but we've also got a lot of older guys who know how to bounce back after a loss. Um, we have guys who are really good in their preparation, and the coaching staff's done an amazing job getting us ready um, for every game we've played this season, and so Practice is competitive, it's been focused, and you know, we're really excited to, to get out there and get after it. It feels like I can tell that you watch a lot of basketball, but how much college basketball are you able to watch knowing obviously half the time you're playing as well? Yeah, I mean, t here and there, I think uh, you try and tune in whenever possible. I love watching basketball at all levels. Right. I think it just helps you learn the game and you see different actions, you watch different uh, coverages. I think it just grows your knowledge of the game. It makes you a better player. And so um, I'll tune in when I can. So, so in watching Duke, I know you've had plenty of film sessions this week. What stands out to you about knowing what you're about to face when you get out on the floor and the things that you've been focusing on throughout this week? Yeah, Duke's a great team, and, and that's part of the reason why this is such a special rivalry is they always have great teams, and so do we. Right. And, um, you know, they've had a lot of success shooting the ball this year, and they're shooting it at a high clip. And they've got Kyle Filipowski, who's, you know, an All-American caliber player, um, I think you know we are we're very focused and and we're kind of going about it the same way we prepare for any team as we watch film on personnel, watch film on you know plays and actions, and we we rep it and we drill it and we you know try and put into practice uh, you know our game plan and our approach and then at the end of the day we do what we do and it's it, it comes down to you know how we execute and right. on both ends of the ball and doing uh, our best to play our style of basketball. And I want to talk a little bit about. Uh the meeting. Now, you don't have to get into all the details of the meeting when y'all got back from Georgia Tech, but how important is that? Because you mentioned seeing this next game, obviously the rivalry is here, but it's about, it's just about winning the next game and preparing and keep preparing to win 
here at this ladder uh, on the latter half of the season. So how is in, how important is it for you all to go ahead and nip that in the bud as y'all move on? It's super important. Uh, obviously, coming off of a loss, you want to digest that. You want to look at the film, take note of what you know, mistakes you made and adjustments you can make that are in your control. Yeah. I think the good news for us is a lot of the stuff that went wrong down in Atlanta was on us. And we didn't execute as, as well as we needed to, and we take ownership of that. Mm -hmm. And that's good news for us because we know exactly where to make our changes and there's stuff that right. we can control. Um, and then the, the biggest part is you take that in, you, you let it sting, obviously, for a little bit because you want that fire, and then you kind of flush it and you got to move on to prepare for the next game. And you take those adjustments and make sure you correct them for the next game. And then you obviously work on your execution and you deal with a whole new opponent. It yeah. comes at you fast. And uh, that's the beauty of this game is you get in this league, you get a chance to bounce back. And there's no better bounce back game than playing in this game. Yeah, there's no time to wallow. We had your friend Harrison Ingram, your teammate, on earlier. And we asked him about his game day routine. He said he'll probably go check out college game day tomorrow just because it's really cool. And he said every game day he has to make his bet. He doesn't do it any other day of the week, mm. but he has to. Is there something that you do in that sense, superstitious-wise, a routine, we'll call it a routine, on a game day, especially tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I usually make my bed uh, in the morning. I would say on game days, I like to, the, the game day, it, even though tip off is at 6.30, game day for us usually starts well before, like right. five, six, seven hours before. And a lot of people don't understand that. Like it's a full day event. You're like, you're getting treatment, you're getting your shots, you have, you have team shoot around, you've got team meal. And so um, for me, my routine has basically been the same coming to shoot around like an hour before I'll get treatment, I'll get some shots up. Uh, we'll go through team shoot around. We'll have a team meal. Um, I'll take like a, a quick nap after team meal um, and then wake it back up and start getting loose, get taped, get on the court, start shooting and we had team warm up like hour, a little out, a little over an hour before the game and it kind of rolls at you from there. I don't know how these nap. guys. Is that little nap? <laughs> yeah, the nap is important, but I don't know how these guys keep talking about they were making their bids. They're not making their bids. I know. Hey, you. we can FaceTime somebody right now. Like, <laughs> I, my bed is made. Okay. Christinely. I know mom watching, so you got to say that. <laughs> Hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> Appreciate you stopping by. Thank you, guys. Stay healthy. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Cormac Ryan having fun with us.